Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about frequency or harmonic response. So, what is it? So, if we have any physical system, and we can show it with a transfer function, now, of course, it has to be linear, so we can define a transfer function for it. But let's say it's linear for the moment, and we can define this transfer function. So, we know this transfer function g is the ratio of the Laplace of the output y over Laplace of input x, right? g is y over x, y of s over x of s. And... Uh, if uh, we have this transfer function and if we give the system a harmonic input like this so x has an amplitude and it has some frequency omega and let's say for the moment it has zero phase if i give such harmonic input to this linear system then the output of the system when the time passes by and it goes to the steady state situation it is also going to be a harmonic of the same frequency but it has an added phase and it has a modified amplitude where this modification in the amplitude and this phase are both basically derived from what from your transfer function and all you need to do is in this uh, g of s instead of s you plug in j omega and j here is the complex j so g of j omega in general is going to be a complex number and it has some magnitude and it has some what some phase and those magnitude and phase functions are what's uh, going to modify your output so basically what this one says is the output of a linear system to a harmonic input is going to be another harmonic output with the same frequency but with the modified magnitude and a modified phase and if we plot this phase and this magnitude functions versus the frequency omega if you plot them both in the same plot in frequency analysis we call it the Bode diagram and that is what we want to create using frequency response analysis in ANSYS and some people will convert the magnitude into decibels by taking the logarithm of this and multiplying it by 20. So if you use 20 log 10 of magnitude, then the unit of that is going to be what? It is going to be in decibels. Okay? And the plot for omega is also typically logarithmic, as you can see here from this. So it's really like a logarithmic plot for also the omega axis. That's a Bode diagram. So whether the axes are linear or a logarithmic, and whether this guy is in uh, just units of magnitude of g or just what? Simply in decibels, uh, what we want to do is to plot the magnitude and phase versus the input frequency. Now, one of the things is when we want to uh, plot these two guys, not only we need to know the input frequency at any point, if you want to evaluate their values, right? If you know their values at any point, not only I need to know omega, I also need to know what the uh, properties of the physical system. And uh, one of the most important properties of the physical system that you need to know are what? the natural frequencies, the omega n's, okay, and the damping ratios like zetas. Uh, right, so um, let me write it properly, hopefully if I can, here. So if you know the damping ratio and the natural frequency and the input frequency, you typically are able to what? To find these functions and plot them. So before, before, I can plot the harmonic response first I need to know the natural behavior of the system and how did we find these natural behaviors natural frequencies remember that was done in modal analysis and I have a video on modal analysis that you want to go and take a look so the first thing we need to do before a harmonic is a modal analysis and then do the harmonic response and that's what you can see here that I have done a modal analysis on this uh, physical object. I'll talk about the boundary condition and everything. And then I related the uh, results of that to what? To uh, basically my uh, harmonic response here. Okay. 
so uh, do you need to relate the solution to the setup? Yes, because you also need to basically uh, know the omegas. Now, what is this physical system? The physical system here is this object, and it has a um, displacement at the bottom, which is only limited to what? To the z direction. So as you can see here, the x and y, I set them to zero. So this system can only move basically uh, in the z direction, right? That surface along with everything else. And I also have an elastic support here. So if it wants to move in the z direction, this elastic support with a stiffness of 10 Newton per millimeter cubes is going to stop it. Because if you don't have this uh, restoring force in the system, your system is not going to show any oscillations. Okay, And it's going to be literally a rigid body that is allowed to freely move in the z direction. So you want to put something here to stop it from motion. Because when I went to the harmonic response, the force that I put is also in the z direction. So here I have the force, the external force, I have the what? I have my, um, basically, uh, the uh, restoring force. I have the support here to not allow it to move in any other direction. And so if you do modal analysis on this system, right, ideally you should be able to see that the system wants to go forward and then the restoring force gets so big that it pushes it back. If you don't see such behavior, then uh, you want to reconsider basically um, your system. So here, uh, you see that's my modal analysis here, and uh, then we get to the solution. But right now, if I look at this total deformation, let's see here. You see, it goes forward, and then what? This is your first mode, and goes back, right? So you clearly see that I do have oscillations in the system because of that elastic support that I put in. So now this modal analysis results is there. Now I go to the harmonic response. As I said, the results of my modal is here. If I go to analysis setting now, you want to say between which two frequencies you want these plots to be. What is this minimum? What is the maximum? So here you provide the range of the frequencies from 0 to 1,000, from 1 to 1. Some systems, they don't go to 0 hertz because they are what we call type 1, type 2 systems, and their magnitude could be infinite. So if you don't want to go from 0, you might go maybe from 1 hertz or something. The other thing is, how many intervals do you want, right? So you want to uh, create these curves using how many points. So you provide that uh, interval here, or you can define user-defined frequencies. If you don't like it to linearly divide it between 1 and 1,000 with 50 intervals, you can provide your own data for frequencies. Just calculate it as this frequencies that I'm asking you. So you can do that as well, right? And then you can have damping control for the system, right? So you can have damping ratio in the system. If you want to, let me provide some damping uh, coefficient as well. And uh, output controls, right? What is it that you want? And so on and so forth. And now you see here the elastic support here has a question mark. Why is that? Because uh, previously I did not connect the solution of the modal to the setup of the harmonic. So what I did was I basically dropped this elastic support from modal and copied it and dropped it on the harmonic response. But now that I have connected the modal result solution to the uh, setup of the harmonic, as you can see, I do not need to define it in two different places. So I need to get rid of this. Otherwise, it is going to get, get me this error. Okay. And uh, here... Um, I changed this uh, elastic support a little bit. I made it a little bit smaller. And uh, the other thing I want to do is the range of the frequency, okay, which was from 1 to 10,000. I want to uh, reduce it maybe 1 to 5,000. That should be enough in this case. 
Okay, so now that I have set up my range and my um, force and everything, I'm ready to look at my harmonic response. Now you might say this force is not harmonic. That's right. The force that I provided is not harmonic. So what kind of response do I get? Well, the response here is not the goal. The goal here is what? The goal here is the uh, basically the transfer function of the system. So the transfer function does not depend on what kind of input you provide to the system. But if you are after the response, remember that even a constant value that I have provided here for this force, which you can see 100 Newton in the Z direction, the constant uh, input also has all sorts of frequencies in it, right? If you do Fourier analysis, you'll see that there are all sorts of frequencies in it. But you might ask whether I can change this force Z component instead of having it as a constant, can I change this force over time? The answer is yes. You can always go to what? You can always go to uh, tabular data and provide basically what? Provide variable forces if you want to. But as I said, the goal here is the magnitude and the phase of the transfer function, which are not functions of input. Okay, they are not functions of input x. So uh, here I provided that for us and I'm ready to uh, solve the problem and look at the uh, magnitude and the phase plot here. There we go. And this is your frequency response. Right, this is your amplitude, and this is what this is your uh, face plot if you want to see it. Okay, so this is the overall behavior of magnitude and face plot for this uh, physical system. So, hopefully, this video was useful to you, and I will see you in my next lecture. Thank you.